I'm not green on the screen. Yay. Hello, everybody. How are you? Welcome on in. Uh, as you know, my name is Tanya, uh, your host here this evening on Twitch. And uh, I am very, very honored to have Stacey Abrams with me. And also Persis Bristol, who is our ASL interpreter. Stacey, how are you? Yes, so um, are you familiar with Animal Crossing at all? Mm -hmm. Uh, hold on, they're saying you're muted. Let me fix that. You shouldn't be. All of the... Uh, I know they are saying that you were muted. It could be the... It could be... You're not muted. Uh, keep talking. I am going to uh, fiddle with audio in the background, but thank you. do this uh, event and it was just such a fascinating not only story to to learn about but it's such an inspiring conversation about how you take adversity and turn it into opportunity and what you did was not only serve yourself but you did everything in your power to open the doors for others and that's i think the reason this matters so much that you use your posture and your position to create space for others and that's always worthy of celebration Thank you so much. And now people can hear you. They heard all those great things you just uh, said about me. So thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I've been a great admirer of your work. And, you know, I'm I'm really honored and glad you all reached out and we could pull this off today. So um, while we uh, get into some Animal Crossing, I guess for me, I want to talk about um, while we load the game is, you know, why tomorrow is so important especially, you know, for you, for folks in Georgia, because for those that don't know, I don't live in Georgia. Um, I have friends there. I, I think I have relatives there, but tomorrow's super important. And I was wondering if you uh, wanted to get into why, while we uh, run my little person around the, around the island. Well, so look, let's talk about your person running around the island. <laughs> what, but but he, that's a perfect segue into this election. That person has to find resources. They have to mm -hmm. try to build capacity. They have to overcome adversity and sometimes that adversity is just knowing what to do and how to get it done absolutely you know that in the midst of COVID 19 there are so many families that thought they had everything situated they thought they'd figured out their lives and this pandemic has upended everything but you know folks thought about this they called it government the government mm -hmm. was designed to help step in when all the plans you made get upended not because of anything you did but because of outside forces that you can't control and when the scale of the challenge is so large, you can't solve it on your own. We need good senators who actually believe in the responsibility that we all share for one another through the social contract. And, and you know that can sound you know highfalutin, but just to be really basic, when times are tough, we're supposed to help each other. And we need U.S. senators who believe in helping us. And one of the challenges we have right now is that the two U.S. senators in Georgia are not helping Georgians. But mm -hmm. what's going to be worse is that if they remain in office, someone out of Kentucky, Mitch McConnell, can stop everything from happening. And we really mm -hmm. need someone both in the new president, but also in the Senate who are willing to work together. That doesn't mean they're always going to agree. Absolutely. But we need new senators who are willing to at least say, I think we should do this together. I think we should help folks. And the reason someone in Chicago or in Milwaukee or in Miami should care is that what they do for Georgia, they're doing for everyone. 
And if they can make it possible for all of us to not only survive this pandemic, but recover from it, that benefits all of us. And that's why this election matters so much. Absolutely. Because, you know, a lot of people put so much energy into like the highest level of election without thinking about their local and state ones. And that's where a lot of these things make a huge difference. Absolutely. Um, like this little digital version of me who is super cute. And uh, I miss being able to put my hair in buns like that because I have way too much hair now. Um, like this poor little octopus. She's just out here in the snow sleeping. Look <laughs> at her. So uh, what got you into Animal Crossing? Um, so for those who don't know, a, a friend at the time talked it up and talked about the game so much, previous versions, and you know, at that time, I didn't know that we would all be stuck inside for most of 2020. And I ordered it, and it was just like, okay, this will be cute, it'll be fun to get into, because it looked really neat. And then, um, for those who don't know, watching, my mom passed, so it also turned into a good distraction for not dealing with with things until I had to, which is not the healthiest, but it is what it is. And then I realized it's fun. You know, I have my cute little people and and like you were saying, it's all about resources. When you start, you just have a tent. You don't even have a house. Luckily, it was spring when the game came out, so we weren't out in the snow with just a tent. Um, but, you know, I got to go meet villagers and, and tell them to come live in my island. So I had to promise them a good life. Exactly. To, to come and hang out and uh been playing a lot of it actually started doing a D&D show based on Animal Crossing uh with some friends who had never played D&D we made our we, I made my basement into a and d room and we started teaching people how to play D&D but using Animal Crossing oh fantastic now that is a crossover that is worth watching yeah we just need to figure out when we're gonna do our uh final episode because Life happens. Um, the folks on that show are uh, Brian Gray, Urban Bohemian, and Shannon Woodward, and uh, Adam Nickerson. And so, you know, people still had to travel in some cases. So right now we're on hold for that last episode, but it'll be fun because I get to fight a dragon. Well, you know, actually the very, one of my favorite series finales in history was, uh, I don't know if folks remember Angel. He oh, was yeah. Yeah, so I love the show Angel. I love Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but I also loved Angel. And you know that very last scene where he was like, I've always wanted to fight a dragon. Like that's, that is penultimate. So there you are- know what? Depending on how everything comes out, if you wanted to do, if you want to do this to celebrate, I'm more than happy to run a D&D game for you. I would, I would actually love it. Cause that was my next to favorite. It's my second favorite uh, series finale ever. Oh but- yeah quite awesome yeah so so while we're running around if you were going to play some D, would what kind of class would you be see that's tell me well I, i'll turn around on you okay having watched my career where would you put me Ooh, it'd be tough between a paladin and a cleric and I say paladin because you're doing what's right. You're you're out here, you know, righting wrongs, and that's stereotypically a paladin. Uh, but also a cleric because all the work that you're doing is, is healing rifts, and you're getting people out here and getting them mobilized to vote. And you know, uh, for those that are watching, we actually have two commands in the chat. Um, I will vote with an exclamation and peach vote. So if you live in Georgia, you can go see where your polling place is. If you still need to vote tomorrow in person, please wear a mask. Please be safe. Please keep distance, but if you do need to go vote tomorrow, please go do so. And anyone in the chat can run those commands. And um, I will tell you guys, if you when you go to vote tomorrow, because I'm assuming all of you will, make sure you remember that if you are in line by 7 p.m., they have to let you stay. Even if the line takes a little longer, if as long as you stay, they have to let you in. And it's so important because, you know, this is going to be, you know, a, a critical election. And I know we say every election is the most important election. This one actually is for all the marbles. It's mm-hmm. going to decide how the next two years unfold. It's going to decide if we get COVID relief checks that aren't $600 to survive the winter. I mean, it, basically, it's like somebody giving you a match, but not giving you any wood on it, you know, on your island. Yeah. yeah. We need, actually, you know, will help us, you know, build a fire, perhaps maybe you know, expand the tent, build a build. I mean, it's, it's just that important. 
when we, you know, when the vaccine is disseminated, when we start to turn the corner, we are going to still be bringing all of the economic turmoil, all of the healthcare issues with us. And if we don't have leaders who are committed to making sure people have access to healthcare, that they have access to good jobs, and that in that space in between, in that time between your, you know, you finding your island and getting your tent and you building your city, mm -hmm. if in that space in between we do not have real support, a lot of folks, especially the poorest among us, the disenfranchised, the marginalized, they're going to fall away and we will we will leave them behind in ways that just should should terrify us all. We should be better people than that. And I just want us to all think about the fact that even if you don't like voting for yourself, part of the reason I vote is because I know that I may have a, a, a pretty good life. Mm -hmm. My job is to make sure that others' lives can be as good as they can. Yeah. And, you know, while you're talking about this, we, we talked a little bit about Animal Crossing, what got me into it, but Animal Crossing is a game about community because, you know, it may seem like cute, fun game, but the your villagers or your islanders, actually, um, they have to kind of get along because on occasion you'll have these interpersonal conflicts. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if, um, I guess we can segue from Animal Crossing being community and the importance of voting, or if Animal Crossing made you vote, because you don't actually have to vote on anything, you just kind of live there there's money but one guy controls all the money which is a little too much like real life i guess <laughs> um but you know let's say if if we lived in an animal crossing world how can we get our communities especially our younger voters because so many people you know go into video games are younger how can we empower them to get out and vote especially if you're there in georgia and right now think their vote doesn't matter so i begin by always telling the truth Voting is not magic. Mm -hmm. We are not going to solve all of these problems that we have, all of these challenges, these interpersonal conflicts, these interparty conflicts. We're not going to solve poverty and health care and jobs and climate change. We're not going to solve all of these with one vote or even 10 votes. Mm -hmm. But it's a process. It's much like building your island. We've got to remember that every action gets us closer to where we need to be. And when you're playing any game, it's about leveling up. Voting helps us level up. And when people refuse to play, when young people decide that it doesn't matter, they're essentially giving their opponents the ability to keep leveling up while they languish and they're still standing there with that tent wondering what's going on. Absolutely. I believe in voting because I know it doesn't solve every problem, but I know if I don't play, if I don't participate, then I'm never going to get what I need because the other guys, the ones who are taking everything or the ones who have needs that are different than my own, they get their needs satisfied because they do show up. I've been voting since I was 18 and I've been involved in voting rights since I was 17 because I saw the disconnect. And for me, for young voters, it's about recognizing that you have extraordinary power, but it's like any superhero at the start of the movie. They don't know what the power is. They don't necessarily know how to use it. And so part of the job is to kind of keep bringing you along so you start to understand just how much you can change. And if you don't think it's true, just look at what happened in November. Young people across this country voted at record numbers and it changed things. And that's something I want young people to hold on to. The reason elderly people vote at such high rates is because they've learned over time voting matters. Mm -hmm. Nobody touches Social Security. If young people voted with the same, and, and again, I don't, it's not chastising, it's just acknowledging. Yeah. The math is on your side. There are more Gen Y and Gen Z than there are anybody else. So when Gen Y and Gen Z come together, the problems that we have get solved, especially when they're the ones running for office too, because it's easier to solve a problem if you understand it. And it's easier to get someone to solve your problem when they know what your experiences are. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, while you're talking and, you know, I'm, I'm catching some cool things in the chat. What I was thinking about, too, is that, you know, to use the analogy of games, what I do professionally is advocate for diversity in games, both video games, tabletop. And, you know, even my little person that I'm I'm now sitting by the fire because there's snow everywhere and it's cold. Um, you know, when the game released, we didn't have Afro puffs. We didn't have nice looking braids, but people advocated for that and they got it. And I'm thinking about in terms of voting, you know, I I live through Reaganomics. I live through all this other stuff. 
And I was wondering if you could speak, because I'm so excited that it's just like us two black women having this conversation. And what does this mean for you as a black woman, you know, for Georgia and for, you know, the coming changes we are going to get to see in a couple of weeks? Why is this so important for you as a black woman? I, I grew up in Mississippi. I was born in Wisconsin, uh, but my family is from Mississippi. My parents are from Mississippi. So we moved back there when I was three. I grew up in communities where things didn't look like me. I was never included. I remember the first time I saw a black person in a commercial as the major you know, character or the first time I read a novel that wasn't about black poverty. <laughs> you know, the, having opportunities to see yourself represented changes how you see yourself in your place. Mm -hmm. What I'm so excited about is that we have seen black women in particular, but women of color writ large work to organize their spaces, work to organize their communities, particularly before they had resources, before anyone else was paying attention. And to go from that to what we have seen transpire in Congress, in mayors, and of course, and a vice president who is African-American and uh, who is Asian-American, it's a transformative thing to see yourself not only represented, but to see yourself represented in not just a positive light, but in a powerful light. I want us to vote because I want us to keep repeating that. I want us to keep seeing our power. Mm -hmm. And the more we see our power, the more we use our power, the better things get. Oh, absolutely. And I know we're, uh, time is flying by and I know that we're unfortunately getting close to our end, end of our time together. But before we go, and before I kind of go see what's in the shop and, and try to come up with a good allegory to shopping and voting, um, yeah. other than what you've already said about young folks and voting, is there anything specific to tomorrow and why people need to be up, you know, polls open at 7 a.m. tomorrow in Georgia and be there if they have not already cast their vote for some reason? Because it's not just harping on young people. We're not doing that because, you know, a lot of people go, oh, well, it doesn't matter. It's not one vote here, one vote there. And that's not true. And we've we've established that. But is there a specific message for young folks in Georgia to get up and mobilize tomorrow? So I'm going to give you three numbers. Five million. That's how many people voted in November. Mm -hmm. Four counts. Those are the two recounts and the two audits to determine the outcome. Mm -hmm. And then eleven thousand seven hundred and seventy nine out of five million people. 11,779 people actually decided the outcome of this election. Mm -hmm. Young people could have been that entire community. We don't know exactly who those 11,779 are, but we know they're out there. Already 112,000 people who didn't vote in November, but watched people refuse to give them $2,000 because they said, that might stop people from wanting to work. Like $2,000 is gonna stop somebody from getting a job that pays them a living wage. But the reality is we don't want to lose this election and lose this opportunity by a handful of votes. Mm -hmm. You could be the vote that makes the difference. You could be the person who decides if the rest of the country gets access to the resources they need to survive the winter on their island if they have access to the food they need, if they have access to housing, because there are 161,000 evictions pending in Georgia. The only thing stopping them is the, is the federal government. The minute mm -hmm. they blink and change their minds, it's game over and people are losing their jobs. They're gonna lose their housing. They won't have their food. And it's happening everywhere. It only takes a few people to change the world. And in an election, you could be that person. In fact, I would assume I'm that person. I want to be 11,779. I want to be in that number because if you're in that number, you're the one changing the world and making the world better. You're the one building that island and building that shop so you can go and start picking up new things. Yeah, and it's it's so gratifying to, to see when people are civically engaged 
Um, and not just, again, not just young people, but a lot of people. I, I mean, I don't know about you, but I had to have those unfortunate conversations with people about why voting mattered. There are still people, you know, even in my age group, you know, late 40s that they still were like, oh, it's rigged. It doesn't make a difference. And I'm like, but it does make a difference when you see that where it's hundreds or maybe 11,779 votes in a, you know, in a state of millions of people. That's a really small margin when you think about it. <laughs> That's um, the difference between the future that we want and the future we end up with. I prefer to to decide what I get. Right. I I would rather, you know, wake up and know that people care about things. And I think that's where a lot of the, and this, and this may, this may be a little bit of a downer note, but I feel it's where a lot of the apathy comes from in terms of voting that people are so convinced their vote doesn't matter at all. Well, I don't think it's apathy. I think okay. it's despair. I think people are so tired and they're so used to disappointment. It's not that they don't care, it's they're afraid to care. And it's easier to say that it doesn't work than it is to say it may not work this time. And so mm. there are some people who are apathetic. There are people who really don't care, but I think for a lot of people, they don't know how to make it work or they're just tired of hoping. Yeah. And, and my belief is, you know, hope hurts, but sometimes it works. Sometimes things get better, but they never get better if we don't try. Yeah. And um, in our in our remaining time, I want to, you know, because I, I don't want to ignore this at all, because, you know, we're playing cutesy game. We are having a serious conversation is looking at, you know, the racial inequality, especially when it comes to voting. You know, my grandmother, I think she she didn't vote for a long time because she was of an age where they could keep black people from voting just because you couldn't sign your name. And, uh, you know, we can't ignore the fact Black Lives Matter, all the people that were murdered in the in the last few years, especially in places where such murders were committed. So I think that's another facet of why it's so important to get out tomorrow and go vote in Georgia. So in I didn't. Oh, I, I'll just echo that by saying in Georgia, where Maud Arbery was murdered and was left without justice for 73 days, 74 days. Mm hmm. Voters in that community got rid of the district attorney who let his body just be a you know an emblem of disinterest. We have seen change happen. And if we want that to continue, if we want to hold people accountable, voting is how we get started because we need access to health care, we need access to jobs, but by God, we need justice mm -hmm. and cannot have justice by hiding. We get justice when we demand it when we show up for it and the place where it begins, it starts in the streets, but it gets its real power at the ballot box. And then it's time to make sure the people we elect do their jobs. And if they don't, they need to know we're going to come back and fire them and try again. Oh, absolutely. Because, you know, it's, it's for the people and by the people, not based on who you like best and who has the most money. Exactly. Usually. Um, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. But, you know, we, we also live in reality. Well, sometimes. Yeah. Except for when we're playing D&D &D or watching Star Trek. Exactly. Um, but, yeah, unfortunately, you know, we're down to our last couple of minutes, Stacey. Is there anything you want to go out on or anybody in particular we should thank? Because we did get started a couple minutes late. And we had audio issues, so I did not get a chance to, to thank the folks who made this possible. Uh, but I'd like you to, to go first. I want to thank you, Tanya. I want to thank Persis for keeping up. And I want to thank everyone listening. This is not the sexiest conversation to have, but it's one I try to have every single day because I, I'm the great, great granddaughter of slaves. Mm -hmm. I am the great granddaughter of sharecroppers. I'm the granddaughter of cooks and domestic workers. And I'm the daughter of two people who made less money, not because they weren't good at their jobs, but it, because it was legal to discriminate based on race and gender. And I got to be the first black woman in American history to stand for governor for a major party. I vote because I see the progress and because I am the legacy that was born by my family and I'm the promise of what they worked for. And that sometimes sounds hokey, but when you sit there and you think about what is possible and you remember how hard it has been 
I can't think of anything I'd rather do tonight than have this conversation with you and talk to the people who are not just playing these games, but who are preparing the world for what comes next. And I hope they put their voices out there in Georgia and they cast their votes tomorrow between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. And they visit peachvote.com. Yes. And uh, thank you. And thank you, Persis. You've been amazing. Um, and everyone who's watching, please don't leave. Um, stream's not over. We're just going to do a quick BRB so we can all get water because we've been talking about 40 minutes straight. But hang out. We're going to keep talking about this, you know, just because Stacy has to leave and Persis has to leave doesn't mean that this topic is going to go away. You all know that I spent my partner anniversary talking about why it was so important to go vote the next day in the presidential election. So this is not a channel where we're going to be like, okay, stacy has gone. We're just going to go back to fun and games. We're going to keep talking about it. And maybe some friends can join us on voice. So I'll hang out. It'll be like two to five minutes, but stay there. Tell your friends and uh, we'll be right back. Thank you. Take care, Thank guys. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stacey, for joining me. I really appreciate it. My honor.